Hey, it's Ramsey Dewey over here in Shanghai, China. Today we have a question from Oscar McPherson who says, uh, Good day, Coach. Oh, good day. Is he Australian? Do I have to read this with an Australian accent and offend everybody over there in the Southern Hemisphere? Good day, Coach. I've been watching your various videos on your channel for a couple of months, and I thought I would ask you a question. There you go. I've just offended everybody with my terrible, terrible Australian accent. I apologize, Oscar. Oscar McPherson. He goes on to say, why are so many martial arts styles incomplete? Is there a style of martial art that covers all the aspects of fighting? Now, that was a terrible Australian accent. It started out like a couple of, a couple of the vowels were okay, and then it started shifting into like a, a scouse accent toward the end or something. I, it was not even scouse. It was like, um, what's his name? The chimney sweep from uh, Mary Poppins. An American doing a terrible, terrible accent, which... Anyway, why are so many martial arts styles incomplete? Is there a style of martial art that covers all the aspects of fighting? Thanks for your thoughts. Well, if you ask some people, they will say, Well, of course, in our martial art, we cover all ranges of combat and all of this. And then you look at what the guys are actually able to do, and then they can't fight. So what... The real crux of your question is why so many martial arts styles are incomplete. Why did they have a very specific focus? Why does boxing just focus on punching and taekwondo focus on kicking and judo focus on throwing and jujitsu focus on, on the ground game, control and submit them on the ground? Why does... Why do there seem to be big gaping holes? Why isn't everything MMA, right? But man, that's a, that's a good question. That's a very good question. I suppose we have to look at the historical context of where these martial arts came from. If you look at combat sports specifically, a sport focuses on a very specific skill set, for example, in basketball, the skill set of maneuvering past the other team and getting that ball into the goal, the hoop, the sport of soccer or football for everyone who isn't an American, maneuvering a ball past the other team and getting it into the goal. American football, maneuvering that ball past the other team, getting it into the goal. Hockey, getting the puck past the other team, getting it into the, into the goal. Man, these all kind of seem like the same sport, don't they? No, they're totally different. They're radically different with different strategies and whatnot. And martial arts are kind of the same thing, aren't they? They're all different ways of fighting where the objective is to beat the other guy up, but we do it slightly differently in this style than we do in that style. You see, in this style, we beat the guy up by dragging him to the ground and twisting him into a human pretzel. In this style, we beat the guy up by dancing around him and throwing jabs in his face. In this style, we beat the guy up by kicking him in the head and knocking him out. But the objective essentially is the same. So why do we crystallize into these very specific styles? Why was it so important to preserve a very specific tradition of, in this style, at this school, we will only focus on techniques A, B, and C, but not techniques D, E, and F? Well, you got to draw the line somewhere. You've got to draw the line somewhere. Have you ever gone to a university? So what do you do at a university? You pick a major. You can't take every class. You can't major in everything. You've got to pick a specialty, right? For example, I studied two things in college. I studied, well, my first time going to college. I went to college twice, believe it or not. The first time I studied modern dance and also Spanish. I got degrees in those two things. The second time I went to college, I studied fitness technology and exercise science. And then, in order to get that degree, you have to take very specific classes. So, for example, to get my degree in modern dance, I had to take modern dance technique classes. But then I also had to take ballet classes. And I had to take folk dance classes and ballroom classes and classes in all these various other 
dance forms, but then I had to take history of civilization through dance. I had to take history of dance. I had to take modern dance improvisation. I had to take music for dancers. I had to do anatomy, kinesthesiology, science classes targeted toward improving one's ability to understand the art of dance. And that's a whole bunch of different subjects. Why couldn't we just go to one class with one professor who knew everything and convey all that information? Do you see where I'm going with this? If you think of martial arts as a university rather than a style which we must stick with to the bitter end, then you can get a whole lot more out of martial arts. Yeah, I like that idea. The martial arts university. So, if your major is winning fights, then you got to learn something about quite a few things. If you want to be as efficient at winning fights as possible, let's say MMA fights, right? You want to be a good MMA fighter. That's your major. Your major is winning MMA fights. You should probably take a boxing class and a wrestling class and a jiu-jitsu class and strength and conditioning classes and Muay Thai classes, maybe supplement with some Taekwondo classes or karate classes or something like that. Those are all good ideas. Those are all things which will contribute to making you a better MMA fighter. And of course, there will be MMA-specific technique classes, just like there were modern dance-specific classes, even though modern dance can be every type of movement, just like MMA can include every type of movement. But not every type of movement is dance, just like not every type of movement is effective fighting. If there was an actual university of mixed martial arts. Oh, that would be amazing. There are sports universities here in China where you can major in Wushu, you can major in Sandai, you can major in Shuizhou wrestling. And that's really interesting. You can major in Taekwondo. One of my students, very, very tall Chinese guy, who's over a head taller than me, majored in Taekwondo. He was a Taekwondo instructor at the Shanghai University of Sport. And I found that so fascinating that he got a college degree in Taekwondo. You can get a doctorate's degree in Taekwondo. That's cool, man. I would be really interested I would be really interested to see the same kind of thing happening with mixed martial arts, specifically because there's so much more to cover. What is folk dance or ballroom dance or jazz? or even classical ballet, have to do with modern dance. In a way, nothing, and in a way, everything. Because if you watch a modern dance concert, you're going to see very different movements from folk dance. You're going to see very different movements from classical ballet or ballroom. But those experiences will certainly help you become a better modern dancer, just like if you dabble in various traditional martial arts and different ways of thinking that can certainly help you improve as a mixed martial artist, give you different viewpoints and experiences and worldviews and so on. So yeah, my friends, think of your martial arts as a university experience. Even though you may not have the building or the actual institution, it's the university of life my good friend Brent, our sophomore year of college, we were walking through the fine arts building one day at our university, and we were looking around at all the exhibits, all the art exhibits made by the students there, some impressive works, and Brent said, Welcome! Welcome to your education, Ramsey Dewey. And I said, Okay, yeah, thanks. To which he went on to say, no, you don't understand. Welcome to your real education. It starts today. In this university. And I said, well, you know, classes started some time ago. He's like, no. This university. The university of life! 
Brent was very emphatic when he talked about things like that. But I remember that experience, and I remember those words, and it makes me chuckle a little bit because of how he delivered them, but at the same time, very, very wise words. Welcome to the University of Life. Class starts today. Thanks for watching. Get out there and train.